the Northwest afternoon. Aliens erupting from Sigourney Weaver's body scared us when we saw it on the big screen in Aliens. People panicked when they heard Orson Welles' War of the Worlds on the radio and thought aliens were taking over the planet. Then we were always told, don't worry, there's no such things as beings from another planet. But the people you're about to meet say, oh yes there are. So if someone walked up to you and claimed to have been abducted by an alien being, how would you react? Think twice before you answer that question uh, as you watch the rest of our program today. We have a phone caller on the line. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hi. Uh, Hi. My name's Cami from Silverdale. Hi. And my question is, couldn't all these sightings and abductions and things, couldn't they be like a product of America's collective overactive imagination? That's got to be a very common <laughs> question, and I'll address it to Dr. John Mack, who has joined us on set. You must hear that question a lot, Dr. Mack. It's kind of the reverse of the usual kind of question, because... Uh, we're a culture that's addicted to not believing in anything except what we can take pictures of or what's reported to police stations or what you can handle physically and the sightings are physical i mean they are the physical evidence or one of the forms of it and uh, there are just so many objectively covered sightings in all of the media and it seems to me that uh, uh, if we uh, deny our own media they become our eyes and ears then what are we to trust as having some reality in the external world. But tell us, tell us how you felt before you began working on this book and before you began working with these uh, experiencers, as you call them. Yeah, I mean, when I first heard about this phenomenon, that, and particularly about Bud Hopkins, the pioneer who investigated them most comprehensively initially in New York, uh, I thought, you know, there must be, this man must be out of his mind and this must be some new form of mental illness. And the colleague that brought me to see him said, no, no, it's real. It's something important going on here. So I reluctantly went to see him. And what I discovered from talking with him, and more significantly with the 90 people that I've worked with since that time, was uh, something that has created a powerful mystery for me. You Dave was just telling us how he believes aliens implanted something in his mouth and then maybe took it out. But this was not so unusual. From reading your book, it sounds like there are a lot of surgical implants being performed. Yes, this may be uh, one of the more dramatic examples, but uh, case after case, the uh, person will remember in hypnosis or without hypnosis that some kind of device was placed in their nose or in the vagina or in the penis in the case of one man. Uh, and they feel that they've been tagged, much the way we tag animals in a herd when we want to be able to track them. It's the experiences that they are doing this so they can be found again, and sometimes they will abduct the person, remove the implant as occurred in this example Dave gave, put in another device, but the idea behind this appears to be some way to monitor or keep track of the people that they're working with. Because they don't just have one encounter, it seems like they have them over and over and over then throughout their life. Mm -hmm. Cindy and our audience uh, had an encounter when you were on I-5 near Mount Vernon and something a little bit weird happened. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, I was actually on my way home at night, about 11 o'clock at night. I had been visiting my mother who had a cerebral hemorrhage. She had uh, cancer that was exacerbated. And I was about 10 miles south of Mount Vernon when I noticed this object that was about to the right of the freeway approximately 50 to 60 feet above the ground and I could tell because of the treetop level most firs are anywhere from 50 to 75 feet tall and I was observing the shape of the craft the size of the craft and the lights that were moving sequentially in a circular sequential motion around this craft and I thought that was very unusual and the closer I got to it I was eliminating things that it could be first I thought it could be a dirigible well I had my window down it was a quiet, calm night, and the closer I got to it, I couldn't hear anything. It was totally silent. Then I knew it couldn't be an airplane. Could so be, couldn't be a helicopter. Well, that was my last alternative. So didn't you stop the car? I was trying to. <laughs> what you the closer I got to it, I realized it wasn't a helicopter either. But the, the size of the craft appeared to be that of a Chinook helicopter although it was a little bit larger. At that point, I realized it was not a craft that we had designed. It was, I, I just knew that it wasn't. That, that humans had designed it. Correct. And the lights that were moving around it, and as I came upon it, I realized it was a sphere. So I made the conscious decision to pull over 
and I am very conscious of my body position when I'm driving. I knew exactly what position I was in as I was getting ready to pull off the freeway to get out and look at this thing. It's as if, it's hard to explain. One second later, I'm 10 miles down the road and I'm driving in a totally different position. And I verbally spoke to myself out loud. That was interesting. Let's take a phone call. Go ahead, caller. Hi, I was wondering, um, why do you think they never reveal themselves to everybody? instead of just one person at a time. Dr. Mack? Now, this question comes up often, what is, uh, what is alien motivation and intention? And that's what we know the least about. Uh, the question presumes that in some way we accept the reality of it. And I think as we accept the reality of this phenomenon, whatever that means, in other words, uh, whether it's from some other dimension entering our dimension, but something important is going on here and we open to it, I believe that they will become less subtle. Right now, they fear us. We attack them when we show up. We, we are frightened of them. We try to, uh, experiences actually have, uh, swing their fists at them, try to knock them down. Uh, so they're, they're worried about us. They paralyze us because they're doing things that are distressing to us. And then we, in turn, understandably, react with fear and aggression. So as we begin to open our spirits or open our souls to whatever reality this is, uh, and when that happens with the people that I work with, they become less aggressive, they show up more powerfully, and maybe at some point they will allow themselves to be better known to us. But right now, they feel, or whatever this is, their intention is, I don't know, but they enter our world in a subtle way. They don't make themselves fully manifest. And I don't know why that is, except what I said. Travis in the audience with a question or comment. Go ahead. Um, why do you believe people are being abducted by aliens? Well, again, that's kind of like the last question. Pur purpose uh, and intent. Yeah, it, it, I don't know the purpose. I know what the basic structure of the experience is, which has three parts to it. It has this breeding program, which appears like a joining of our species, which is very densely embodied, and the alien species, which is much less densely embodied, which seems to be a very difficult project because the hybrids don't seem to be very vigorous. So that's one thing. Second is, there is some kind of information exchange going on. They are conveying to us on monitors and telepathically that the destruction we are wreaking upon the Earth is causing damage that is affecting the cosmos, is not just an Earth-level damage. And the third dimension is, in some way, this is opening the experiences, people like Dave and Cindy and Sharon, to a higher dimension, a higher sense of themselves, mm -hmm some kind of spiritual opening evolutionary processes occurring. So those seem to be the three effects of what they do. We've but whether that's their intention or not, I'm not sure. We've got to break away for a moment. Are aliens our enemies or are they our friends? We'll find out when we come back.